Hello and welcome to another episode of Gadgets and Gizmos. My name is Gaurav Prethi and what's new? Well, we are in KL, Malaysia. It's a beautiful place where you find the tallest of the buildings, beautiful restaurants, clean roads and no cows. I wonder where they keep them. But anyway, the city is beautiful and so is the show. And here is what we have lined up for you in this week's episode. It's kind of hot and humid but I don't mind. So last week we showed you the BlackBerry Priv, their first Android smartphone. They're trying to make a comeback and Kyle very reluctantly agreed to review it. He likes something and he's kind of annoyed with something. Here's his review. You know, Android doesn't go hand in hand with two things privacy and security. It's almost like when you add a gobi shalgam achar to a pesto pasta. They just don't work together. But strange things keep happening in this world. And last week, Blackberry announced the Priv. And it's a phone which is BlackBerry's first phone to run Android and it promises a lot of interesting things that people have been longing for. It packs in a BlackBerry keyboard with the power of Android. It also gives security, BlackBerry class security to Android users. But is it too little too late? <music> Apart from Android, the Priv's main claim to fame is this. A hardware keyboard. That's what Blackberries are known for and people using Android phones have been asking for hardware keyboards for a long time. But companies like Samsung just don't make them. Well, Blackberry is known for hardware keyboards and the Priv comes with a hardware keyboard. And I can tell you one thing. This is the best hardware keyboard that is ever shipped on an Android smartphone which is a great thing. It's very easy to type and it also gets the swipe gestures that were available in the keyboard of the BlackBerry Passport. Also, it has this slide out design which would make many people think that this phone would be top heavy. But no, it's pretty balanced which is a very surprising thing and again a great thing. The screen, this is a 5.4 inch screen. It's got a 2K resolution and it's a gorgeous screen. Uh, its color fidelity is really accurate. It may not be the brightest screen and it's slightly reflective but, but still you won't have a problem with this. This is a really good screen and also design wise the screen literally melts into the frame of the device which is really attractive and it also helps around with the swiping gestures on Android. Also this is running Android which is obviously a great thing and it's running seemingly a stock build of Android but under the skin Blackberry has literally rewritten the kernel which basically means they've made it as secure as a Blackberry 10 smartphone. At the same time they've added some premium Blackberry experiences like the Blackberry Hub which has always been a staple of Blackberry smartphones. Also an app called Detect which kind of detects apps for some nefarious activities. So this is going to be a really secure smartphone. Also on the back it gets a 18 megapixel camera. Now Blackberry smartphones aren't known for their cameras. Most of them have been in the past kind of unusable in terms of photography but this one does a pretty good job. In daylight it takes some really good photos with lots of detail. Obviously the image quality slumps in night time but still this is decent. Yes of course it's not iPhone 6s or Galaxy CS6 good but it will get the job done. Also on the front it gets a decent selfie camera and you know as selfies are the fad these days it's going to keep that sorted also and you can use it for video chats also you can use it for BBM messenger video chats which is another great thing. Also this phone is a power packed device it's using the latest Qualcomm 808 processor which was there in Nexus 5X gets 3 GB of RAM 32 GB of storage it has a really big battery it's a really decked up Android phone and you know with the combination of the Blackberry brand, Blackberry design and this hardware keyboard, this is a cause worth fighting for. The combination that Blackberry has cooked up for the Priv is a really compelling one on paper but the experience in real life is iffy to say the least. 
For starters, this phone is a decked up smartphone. It's running the latest processor. It's got 3 GB of RAM. Yet, this phone hangs, stutters, also gets a little warm. It's imperfect. It's something that BlackBerry can fix using a firmware update, which I'm hoping they will do. But right now, when you open the box, it's a buggy experience. Then, this phone has this hardware keyboard, which is great for people who really depend on a hardware keyboard. But if you look at a person like me, who uses an iPhone, who has really moved on from hardware keyboards, this just does not cut it. And finally, the price at 63,000 rupees for most people, an iPhone 6S would make more sense. It will only appeal to people who are heavily dependent on this keyboard, hardware keyboard, and also people who need the corporate security this phone offers. For everyone else, the iPhone 6S will mean more. And also for much lesser, there are great phones like the Galaxy S6 or even the Nexus 6P for that matter. Well, these days you don't really need a SIM card when you're traveling abroad because all you need is Wi-Fi and that's, yeah, I've been managing pretty fine. Now, 4G, yes, uh, the thing that people are excited about in India, which will change their life, uh, provided there is networks. And uh, there are lots of budget 4G smartphones that are there in town. And this week we have Carbon Quattro 4G. Let's see how it performs. The Carbon Quattro L50 is a decent looking phone. We will give it that. Carbon surprises this time with a design that is practical but still looks decent enough to strut out in public. It isn't a huge departure from their previous work, but effort seems to be put in to smoothen out the rough edges in the otherwise average design. The corners are rounded, the phone is lightweight and it fits snugly in your hand like a glove. The same effort seems to have gone into the software side of things. Gone are the ugly, tacked-on interfaces of the past. In its place, Carbon brings out something known as the Candy UI, which is again yards better than what they had offered in the past. Unfortunately, that's where the pros seem to end. The 5-inch 720p display is neither sharp or very color accurate. It gets bright, but that's about it. The 1.3 GHz MediaTek Quad-Core processor performs decently. It comes paired with 2 GB of RAM and makes most tasks seem possible. Gaming is not its strong point though. It'll struggle with graphic intensive games. Heck, putting Temple Run 2 on high quality settings induced a stutter or two. Stick to basic tasks and you should be fine. The 2600 mAh battery lasted us about a day of moderate use. With heavy use, expect to hunt for a charger at about 8 hours or so. Priced at Rs. 7750, it isn't going to burn a hole in your pocket. But with so much competition in this segment, the L50 HD unfortunately just doesn't stand out enough for a recommendation. The smartwatch is that thing you wear on your wrist which tells more than time. Sahil, our watch nerd, whom we had thought had settled on the Apple Watch, well, he had been using the Samsung Gear S2 for quite some time now. And let's ask him how he finds it. Over to you, Sahil, watch and company. Well, Apple hogs all the limelight for smartwatches. It was actually Samsung which started the fad a couple of years ago with the Galaxy Gear series of smartwatches. And over the years, Samsung has iterated with different operating systems, Tizen and Android Wear. Back then, it also used to have some whimsical ideas for its smartwatches. Can you believe it? Back then, they had a camera in their smartwatch. Now, after a couple of years, with a lot of iteration, Samsung returns with the new Galaxy Gear S2. And one thing I can tell you, it's wildly different from what Apple is offering and from what you get on Android smartwatches. So, let's find out what's all the hype about. As 
as I've already mentioned that the Gear S2 is a wildly different beast from what Apple is offering and from the deluge of Android Wear smartwatches in the market and all of that begins with the user interface of the Gear S2. Samsung employs this cool rotating dial around the bezel of the screen of the Gear S2. In fact, it actually reminds me of high-end sports chronographs and it's very simple to use and you can elegantly glide through the user interface of Tizen and it offers a satisfying clicky sound which kind of reminds me of the original iPod. Samsung could actually teach Apple a thing or two about smartwatch user interface design. Yes, that's super weird. Also, the size of the Gear S2 is just perfect. First of all, it's circular, which is what most people expect in a watch. And also, it's not too big like the Moto 360 and not square like the Apple Watch, which is very important. Also, the strap fits in comfortably. And overall, it feels like a high-end Casio sports watch. Tizen itself works pretty well with Android. I'm parsing all my notifications from my smartphone through the Gear app. It has a heart rate monitor, it has a pedometer, it keeps a track of how much I'm walking, of my daily activities and it basically does most of the things that you would expect of a smartwatch. By the way, before I forget, the battery life on this thing is quite killer. It easily lasted me through the day and which is frankly speaking slightly above average and was definitely higher than what I got on the Apple Watch. But what I don't like on this is the dearth of apps and that's largely due to the fact that this is running Tizen and not Android Wear nor WatchOS. And I don't see that changing in the foreseeable future. So if you're an app junkie, then you may need to reconsider things about the Gear S2. Also, you're going to wear this thing on your wrist. You're going to use it like an accessory. And probably, like most people are, a stinky bit vain, you want a really high-end brand on your wrist. Like a Rolex. Like an Apple. Yes, Samsung is good, but... Compared to Apple, it's like chalk and cheese. But still, at around 25,000 rupees, if you're looking for an easy to use smartwatch with an Android phone, you want a simple and unique experience, then the Gear S2 is not too bad. Especially when you take into account, it's slightly cheaper than even the Apple Watch. And it's time for a gaming segment now. Let's see what Rohit has been playing this week. is a hard game to review. The whole game can be summarized in broadly two words, maze puzzles. Well, there's more to the game than this gross oversimplification, but your enjoyment out of the game boils down to these two words, maze puzzles. The world around these puzzles is where things start to get interesting. The environment around you is built to tell a story on its own. With enough hints to tell you how the world came to be as it is. The bright, colourful world of the witness is a sight to behold. The game's artistic direction is top-notch. Vibrant, colourful designs fill your monitor at every turn, inviting you to explore the world further. But your exploration is tied to a puzzle reward mechanism. The maze puzzles in question evolve too, getting complex and adding new rules with each turn of the die. Silence is another aspect of the witness that you will come to either love or hate. Barring the occasional music cues or the ambient sounds, the world around you is eerily silent. There is not a spoken dialogue or a written word or instructions of any kind in the witness. The game will not hold your hand, it will not tell you what to do, nor will it applaud you for completing a challenging puzzle. It feels and works like a game about isolation, where your triumphs are celebrated only by you. So if 
suffice to say a lot of players will complain of tedium at the overwhelming amount of puzzles the game throws at you. Or a lot many will complain of boredom at the monotony of roaming the island alone. It's a testament then to the design of the game that keeps things fresh and interesting by throwing new areas or a new mechanic in the next puzzle. But as I said, your enjoyment of the witness will depend on two words. Maze puzzles. If you have recently gotten your Apple device repaired from an unauthorized third party, chances are you're seeing the dreaded Error 53 screen. According to Apple, this is a security measure to protect devices with a Touch ID sensor in them. If during an update, a check for an authorized Touch ID sensor and its link to the security enclave fails, Apple bricks the device to protect your fingerprints. However, many users are complaining that they're seeing the error even if they have replaced something that has nothing to do with the Touch ID sensor and enclave. Looks like it's time to bite the bullet and pay through your nose for an official screen replacement. Till someone finds a workaround, of course. According to multiple sources, BlackBerry has fired close to 200 people from its Waterloo and Florida offices. Most notably, Gary Glasson, the man behind the once popular BBM service, has also left the company. In an official statement, BlackBerry said the move is to enable them to execute a turnaround plan and to capitalize on growth opportunities, as a result of which nearly 200 people have been laid off from the Waterloo and Sunrise Florida offices. The move comes just as BlackBerry is now transitioning to Android as its main OS. Citing no interest in the platform amongst tough competition from the likes of iOS and Android, Firefox has said that it's killing off the Firefox OS for smartphones. In a blog post, Mozilla dev George Rotter said that the tough competition from multiple established platforms meant there was no interest in the platform and that post the Firefox OS 2.6 release, the OS will no longer have staff support, which is expected to happen sometime in May. If you're a gamer, chances are that you're aware of the Steam sales. The massive discount-filled festivals that let you nab a lot of popular gaming titles of the gaming service for dirt cheap. Well, Steam has now begun its Lunar New Year sale and like most of its sales, this one features a ton of popular titles on sale. Steam also rolled out Indian currency support this year, which means you could be buying some very good games for as low as Rs 92. So what are you waiting for? Get on your desktop and start clicking. Alright, that's all we have for you in this week's episode. We'll be back next week uh, with more of Gadgets and Gizmos. Mama, I'm coming home.